I don't know about you guys, but winter arc has been all over my For You page. And this is one trend that I can actually get behind. I love that we're kind of rewriting this whole narrative that we have to wait until January 1st to start thinking about our goals and who we want to be in that next year. I feel like it just puts, puts so much pressure on January 1st to sit down and create all of these goals that are going to transform your life and that these changes have to happen overnight. October 1st was the start of Q4 or the last quarter of the year. And these next couple months are a great time to start working on making those changes, working on some of those goals that you had for 2024 that you maybe haven't put enough time towards because change doesn't happen overnight. Building those habits takes time. It takes weeks and months. And if you start now, you're setting yourself up for a much stronger new year. So in the spirit of the last quarter of the year, in the spirit of winter arc. Today I wanted to give you guys my hot girl book recs. These are book recs that will help you become your highest self, that will help you grow, heal, that'll help you unlearn a lot of the things and the bad habits that you maybe want to leave behind in 2024. A hot girl book is a term coined off of TikTok. They're books that hot girls read. They're cool. They're edgy. They're not your run-of-the-mill contemporary fluffy story. They have like an added layer of nuance to them. They're a little bit more hard hitting. You look smart when you're reading them. A quintessential example of a hot girl book is The Idiot by Elif Batuman, which I've been in the middle of for a year. I really need to come back and read this book. But look at this cover. If I were reading this at a coffee shop, you would probably think that I was reading about geology. Never suspect that this is a literary fiction book about a Turkish girl going to Harvard in the 90s. Half of the time, the hot girl books that I see on TikTok are literally just because of their cover, but I'm here for it. We're gonna lean into the trend a little bit today, but in all honesty, these are books that a lot of which I feel like taught me something important and were really transformative reads for me. A lot of these books are going to be memoirs and nonfiction books. I think I only have like one or two fiction books, but the reason why I'm recommending these books is because they were truly transformative reads. Nonfiction is a genre that I definitely want to read more of, but for the most part, I'm typically reading a fiction book on a regular. I love me some good old fiction. And I honestly struggle with getting into nonfiction, especially when it comes to like self-help books, because my issue with them is I find them to be a little bit too preachy. Having said that, my first recommendation is any book by Amanda Montel. She currently has three books out, Words Let, Cultish, and The Age of Magical Overthinking, Notes on Modern Irrationality. That one has such a long title, I always have to look it up. Starting off with Word Slut, pretty sure this one was her debut novel. What I love about Amanda Montel is she is a linguist by trade. I'm pretty sure she has her like PhD and did a ton of research in linguistics and so when she writes about specific topics or theories she goes into such depth in a way that I feel like a lot of nonfiction self-help type books don't really do. I feel like one of my biggest pet peeves about self-help books is they'll bring up a concept or a theory, they'll hit you with a one-liner and then they'll move on and they don't really say much or go much in depth but I feel like Amanda Montel does such a great job of like going into a lot of the history behind certain things, going into different studies, really just getting into depth behind a lot of the ideas that she's bringing in her books. So Word Slut is kind of about how the English language is gendered and all of the linguistic roots of like how gendered the English language is. She goes into a lot of history and I feel like with this one like I learned so much Language is something that we use on a daily basis and a lot of the English language is gendered in a way that we don't really pay attention to or expect. She goes into all of the different connotations and the history and how the language has kind of evolved. And she also just talks about the implications of how powerful language can be in just even informing like our subconscious perceptions about people and about gender identity. This was such an interesting read. I listened to it on audio and I believe all of her audiobooks are narrated by her as well. Her second book, Cultish, is about cults and not the cults that you're thinking of, not like Scientology and QAnon, although she does talk about those examples in depth, but the book kind of focuses on modern day cults and cults that we've kind of normalize in our society like cult followings and different cultish movements. She talks about soul cycle as an example and just in general a bunch of different cult followings followings and how we as a society are so obsessed with 
cult behavior and how we easily fall into cult behavior without even realizing it. This was really interesting because she gets into like the dynamics and like the psychological reasons why we're so drawn to cult behavior and why it's so natural for humans to want to be a part of a collective. A lot of the times when we look at cults like the Church of Scientology or other different extreme cults, we wonder how people could fall into something like that. But reading this book really opened my eyes to how susceptible we all are to this type of thing, especially if you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. As humans, we're wired to crave connection and community and we look for community in any way that we can. And I think in this modern age where organized religion has definitely been on the decline, at least in, this, in the US, a lot of these cultish groups, a lot of these cultish organizations and movements are very appealing to people because it brings a sense of community and belonging in a way that is devoid when you don't necessarily have something like a religion. This was definitely one of the most interesting reads that I have ever read. Her last book, I have 30 minutes left of the audiobook, but it's about overthinking. Even if you don't think you've struggled with overthinking, everyone I feel like falls into overthinking, but it also talks about just a lot of the different cognitive biases that are a result of overthinking. She talks about things like the sunk cost fallacy and additive solution bias, which the sunk cost fallacy is this idea that we invest a lot of our time or energy or money into something. Even when it's showing signs that it's not working, we don't want to give up on it because we're so concerned about how much we've already put into something, which is something that I'm sure has happened to all of us. I know it's happened to me in the past. It's like once I go down a specific route, I don't want to abandon it. You know, I don't want to abandon that project. It's such something that is such a hindrance to progress because if you're not able to pivot, if you're not able to wake up the next day and start something new or start a new chapter or try something new and just like abandon what you're used to and comfortable with and has been quote unquote working, you'll never be able to really grow. The other one, additive solution bias, is one that is something that I do on a daily basis. And it's this idea that when we, whenever we have a problem in our lives or something that we want to change, our minds immediately go to what can we add to our lives to fix our problems instead of removing things to fix our problem, especially in a capitalist society and with social media constantly shoving down different products that can solve our latest problems in our lives. I feel like we all struggle with additive solution bias. She talks about how in a lot of ways, it's a lot more effective and easier to just remove the things in your life that are causing certain problems or preventing you from doing things that you want to do. Like for example, if you want to get active and start running, instead of going out and buying a bunch of different workout tops and a new pair of shoes and a new water bottle on top of that, removing the distractions in your life that are causing you to feel like you don't have enough time to do that thing. And I know for myself, my first instinct when I want to start something new or I want to build a new habit is to go out and buy the thing that I need to build that habit it's to go out and buy that new journal or to buy that new pair of shoes when you can really just work with what you have she explains these concepts in so much depth I, I feel like I always learn a lot from Amanda Montel books next I have my body by Emily Ratajkowski I definitely butchered that name Emily is a famous model. She blew up on the internet after her appearance in the Robin Thicke music video, which that music video came out when I was in like elementary or middle school. So I honestly wasn't super familiar with the scandal going into the book. She was a famous model from Southern California. She got selected for the music video. It was a super scandalous music video that featured naked women and after her experience on set, she came out with her story that she had been sexually assaulted while she was on set. She faced a lot of backlash. There were some people that were basically saying that she kind of asked for it and she put herself in that position. And in the memoir, she's kind of talking about her, her relationship with her body, her experiences with assaults, and how that affected her perception of her body, but also just her perception of her body in general, she describes growing up always kind of having a conventionally beautiful and attractive body and fitting into American society's beauty standards for women and how in a lot of ways, while people may see that as a good thing, it also put her in a position where she was constantly just valued for her body and her beauty and the thing, her physical aspects when there was so much to her. One of the things she talks about is how much she loves 
writing. And you will see in this book that she is an incredible writer, but it's like she's always just kind of known for her body and her face when there's an entire human being behind that face and behind that body. She also just kind of talks about her perception of her body and how it evolves over the years. She talks about her relationship with her body as a young girl and how it evolves when she goes through things like puberty and even how much it changes in her adulthood and when she ends up becoming a mother herself. And it was really interesting to just kind of see that evolution. Her writing style is so incredible. It's a really, really short read. So you'll be able to get through this in like a day or two. This next one is a recent read for me and it is Attached. I've been recently interested in attachment theory because I just feel like I've been hearing a lot about it on different podcasts and also just hearing it referenced in different books that I was reading. So I decided to finally sit down and actually read the actual book based on attachment theory. I had taken the attachment style quiz before I had read the book and I got dismissive avoidant, but I didn't really know too much beyond that. Even some of the other different attachment styles, there are three main attachment styles, avoidant, secure, and anxious. Secure is like the healthy attachment style. The avoidant attachment style, you struggle with receiving love, you tend to push people away, you really crave independence, and a lot of the times can see love as almost taking away from your independence sometimes. The anxious attachment style is like you overthink a lot of the times, you crave a lot of proximity, and you fear things like abandonment and all of that. And then the secure attachment style is like the, the healthy, happy balance kind of in the middle. There can be overlap between the three different attachment styles, so it goes into that and also goes into the fact that your attachment style can actually change when you experience new relationships, which I had no idea. I found that really interesting, but the book kind of goes into the different types of attachment styles, how they actually work through actual examples and stories of people's relationships, which I thought was really interesting because it's one thing to kind of hear about the theory, but it's another thing to see it in action and see how it affects the way that people navigate relationships and love. And then it also gives solutions based on whatever attachment style you have and how you can kind of move away from those other two attachment styles to more of like a secure attachment style. This is a really good book not even just to like learn about yourself but also to understand how other people are different because we're all so different even though you may be able to be put into a category of like different attachment styles we're all very different people we communicate differently and part of communication is understanding how people receive certain actions or behavior or things that you're saying and adapting to it and i think just having empathy is such an important skill to have and i feel like Reading this book helps you understand how other people may see things differently and just develop better empathy in the way that you navigate your relationships. Definitely worth the read. I will say the end half of it started to get a little bit repetitive, but it was really interesting to learn about. A great read for everyone. This wouldn't be a hot girl book Rex video without talking about everything I know about love by Dolly Alderton. If there's any book that you read on this list, make sure to read this one. Even though this book is technically a memoir, it doesn't even feel like a memoir because of how lively her story is and just how good she is at like crafting her narrative. This is Dolly Alderton's story of life. It's about parties, dates, friends, jobs, life, and love. She's a very messy person, but it kind of goes through all of her different life experiences in terms of romantic love, friendships, aging, a lot of the different themes that just kind of come with going about life, growing up. It starts when she's young, it takes you through high school, college, post-grad, her 20s and 30s, into even her 40s, I want to say. One of the things that I really appreciated about this book is the way that it kind of showed how you never stop really growing, you never stop evolving. Even if you're in your late 20s, your 30s, your 40s, you're still experiencing life for the first time. You're still learning and growing and you're still just evolving as a person. Your identity is just constantly changing and is fluid. She really takes you through a lot of her life realizations that come about from her different experiences through friendship breakups, through romantic relationships ending, through the loss of her female friendships, through grief, through loss, just honestly everything and she does it in such a like witty writing style that is so easy to understand and so addicting to read. I really love this one and I need to reread this sometime soon. Next up 
is Normal People by Sally Rooney. I feel like I don't talk about this book often enough. Sally Rooney is that girl. She writes some of the most messy characters in her books, but they're always so complex and three-dimensional. I would say out of her three books, Normal People is definitely my favorite. This book covers grief, it covers loss, it covers friendship, experiencing love and the evolution of it. And it's just one of those books again that takes place over many different years. It takes place in Ireland. It follows Marion and Connell. They meet when they're in high school and they also end up going to the same college. So it follows them from high school all the way throughout, all the way throughout their lives. It goes through the highs and lows of their lives and all of the grief that they experience, the hardship that they experience. Sally Rooney can write a messy character, but it's by reading those messy narratives that I think you can realize so much about the human experience and even just find aspects that you relate to it. Read this one and watch the show because I feel like her adaptations are always so good. Next one is 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think by Brianna Weiss. I want to say I discovered this one off of TikTok and I've been slowly reading this book for, I kid you not, a year. I actually started listening to this audiobook last fall and have been listening to it slowly because it's such a dense read. There's so much packed into this book. It's 101 essays covering a range of different topics, but a lot of it really just focuses on unlearning negative ways of thinking and unlocking ways for you to just become more of like a healthier individual. It talks about like success and your definition of success. It talks about comparison in your 20s. It talks about navigating different relationships. It talks about such a range of topics. I will say my main critique with this book is it kind of does the thing that I hate with self-help books where it talks about a lot of different ideas and doesn't really go super in depth about all of them. It'll hit you with a lot of like one-liners and things that will definitely change the way that you think for sure, but it doesn't really go in depth, which is why I kind of recommend just taking your time with this read and like reading it very slowly and just internalizing it. Like I feel like this is one of those books that you could actually benefit a lot from reading slowly and even journaling as you're reading or going through it or taking notes. I'm almost done with this one. I have like 30 minutes left of this one. So I wanted to share this one just because I've been reading this for so long it feels like, but even though I'm about to finish it, I feel like afterwards I need to go out and get the physical copy and reread it again, but this time like highlight and annotate. I couldn't make this video without talking about Toni Morrison. So my next rec is Sula by Toni Morrison. I don't have my physical copy out because I lent it to a friend, but this was my first Toni Morrison book. I had tried to read Beloved before I read Sula, not a great idea. If you're gonna start off with the Toni Morrison book, I would definitely recommend Sula because I feel like it was a lot easier to just like get into the story. And I felt like with Beloved, I was struggling with the writing style to be honest. I feel like Beloved is just a little bit harder to read. And I was reading online that Beloved is one of her most convoluted ones. Sula follows two young girls, Sula and Nell. They're childhood friends and they live in this all black town on this mountain. The book explores friendship. It explores the fluidity of the black identity. It explores moral fluidity. What's interesting is because it takes place in this all black society in the interwar period. So in between in the interwar period. And even though it's in an all black society, it kind of explores like the ways that even in a context where everyone is black, there's still discrimination, ostracizing, this idea of superiority and how it kind of interplays in those dynamics. I read this for a resistance seminar, my resistance seminar that I took last semester. And honestly, that was honestly the best environment to read this book because reading it and discussing it with other people and just hearing other people's insights really opened my eyes to how layered Toni Morrison's writing style is and how every single sentence, every single word that she chooses has a double meaning to it. There's always so much to just kind of glean from her books. And so there are definitely books you want to read a little bit on the slower side, but I flew through Sula and I just enjoyed this one so much. There are so many different themes in this book. It talks about motherhood, all of black motherhood and how it just compromises who you are. I love this book so much. I want to read all of Toni Morrison's other books. I actually started reading Tar Baby last night. I've only read a chapter and I'm already in love with being back in Toni Morrison's writing. I have one more memoir for you guys and it's Finding Me by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is someone that I've always looked up to. So 
When I found out that she was coming out with a memoir, I was so excited. This book did not disappoint. Viola Davis is an actress and one of the reasons why I admire her so much is because I feel like she just brings life to every single character that she plays. In this book, she explores how a lot of her ability to just reach a certain level of range in depicting the human experience really comes from a lot of her childhood traumas and her experiences. She had a really rough up upbringing. She talks about the abuse that she experienced in her household so definitely look into the content warnings of this but she kind of talks about how a lot of that trauma as a young girl really shaped her and pushed her to be able to depict again aspects of the human character that we don't see in a lot of other actors it was a lot about her self-discovery and how she had to shed a lot of the self-hatred that she developed throughout her life because of the abuse and the trauma that she experienced and while it was extremely difficult for her to do that and it's something that she avoided throughout her life by the time she hit her like 30s and 40s eventually she got to a point where that wasn't something that she could avoid anymore she goes into the hard work and the struggle that it takes to reach a point of radical self-love and how at the end of that dark tunnel is finding your voice. An excellent read. I could not recommend this one enough. So those are all of my hot girl book recs. Let me know if any of you guys actually end up reading any of these and your guys' thoughts. I'd also love to hear some of your guys' hot girl book recs. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I will see you guys in my next one.